Oh yeah? Good. Cool. That's even better. I'd like to open the meeting. Uh, the regular, this is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Kettering City Council. Today's date is May 10th, 2022, and we will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we'd like to start with a brief invocation. Um, Heavenly Father, Please be with this council tonight as we go about the business of the city of Kettering. Uh, we ask for your guidance. We ask you to give us the wisdom necessary to make good and honest and transparent decisions. We also ask that you keep everyone in the, involved in the war in the Ukraine um, safe if possible. Uh, it's, that's a lot to ask for in the middle of a violent war, I know. We honor you, we love you, and be with us tonight. Thank you. Okay. Um, I, before we go on with our meeting, I'd like to recognize our Miami Valley Communication Council TV operator, Mike Speroni. Mike, thanks for your assistance. Look, there's that right. hand. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, we have uh, next have the approval of the minutes. We have um, a couple of minutes to approve of at this point. I think Tony, you're going to handle handle all of them. Right? Okay, okay. okay. Um, Your Honor, I've uh, reviewed the uh, special meeting minutes from our retreat on March 24th, 25th, 2022. And uh, first, I want to compliment. Mr. Burke Stresser, whoever put those minutes together, that was, that was quite a detailed and thorough job over that uh, two days. So I wanna, I'm gonna make a motion to approve the minutes from the March 24th, 25th uh, council retreat. Second. Been moved and seconded. Call the roll. Mr. Kleepas. Yes. Mrs. Hall. Yes. Mr. Scott. Yes. Ms. Duvall. Yes. Mr. Duke. Yes. Mrs. Fisher. Yes. Mayor Lehner. Yes. Your Honor, uh, I also have uh, reviewed the April 26th council meeting and workshop minutes, found them also to be in order, and move for their approval. Second. Call the roll. Mr. Kleepas. Yes. Mrs. Hall. Yes. Mr. Scott. Yes. Ms. Duvall. Yes. Mr. Duke. Yes. Mrs. Fisher. Yes. Mayor Lehner. Yes. Okay, we have a couple of proclamations this evening. Uh, the first one, uh, recognizing Bike Month, is going to be read for us by Mrs. Hall. Oh, it's on here. It's on here. Yeah. It's on here. <laughs> okay, I'm thrilled to be reading this proclamation as a council liaison to the bike um, committee who does such an excellent job. It's just really a pleasure to be a part of your committee and you've really helped improve the city for um, both cyclists and pedestrians. So thank you so much. Our proclamation reads, whereas the bicycle is an economical, healthy, convenient, and environmentally sound form of transportation and an excellent tool for recreation and enjoyment of Kettering scenic beauty, and whereas biking is a lifeline for so many people during their daily lives, whether it is the primary way people commute to essential jobs, the way people relieve stress and decompress after being home for long periods of time, or the way children get much needed exercise when schools are closed. And whereas creating a bicycle friendly community has been shown to improve citizens' health and well being, traffic safety, and wear and tear on roads, and whereas the city of Kettering's commitment to create a bicycle friendly community is evident in recent award designations, including the city receiving the bronze level bicycle friendly award from the League of American Bicyclists and being selected as the host city for the 2021 Miami Valley Cycling Summit. 
And whereas the city will continue to foster relationships with local organizations, including Bike Miami Valley, Five Rivers Metro Parks, the Dayton Cycle Club, the League of American Bicyclists, to enhance bike safety within Kettering community, and whereas with help of various groups and organizations, public awareness of bicycle safety will continue to grow and will improve the health and safety for everyone on the road, which will allow the Kettering community to continue to be a premier destination for cycling. Now, therefore, the mayor of the city of Kettering of Ohio, on behalf of city council and the community, does here bike proclaim May 2022 to be bike month in the city of Kettering, Ohio, and encourages all citizens to recognize the importance of bicycle safety and to be more aware of cyclists on our streets and roads. Thank you, Mrs. Hall. Um, accepting the proclamation this evening is Kendall Drager, chairperson of the bike committee. Come forward. Be next team. Next team. <laughs> there you go. Congratulations and thanks. Thanks for all your work. And if you'd like to say a few words, it looks like you're going to have some help. I'm going to start. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Mrs. Hall. Um, I know you haven't been on our committee a long time, but it's great to have you aboard, and your input's been invaluable so far. So looking yeah. forward to continuing to work with you. Um, tonight, Kendall's just going to give you a brief update of, of what we've achieved over the last year, um, some of the things you've heard in the proclamation, but Kendall does have a list of things that uh, add on to the list that we've heard already. Kendall, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Andy. As Andy mentioned, so the, the pandemic did reduce some of our activities this past year, but uh, Kettering hosted the, the, uh, cycling, the regional cycling summit. 99 people attended that virtual event. 46 did the bike ride. The proceeds that Kettering received from hosting that event is being put towards two signs at our recently installed rest areas and as a legacy project. Um, a new bike, uh, bike Miami Valley chapter was formed this past year called Cycle Kettering, and they've already partnered with our Parks Department to offer five community rides this summer. We've also initiated a, a bicycle counting and um, data collection program that's ongoing. Uh, we, we had a booth both at the, the block party and the holiday at home last year to educate and encourage both walking and, and bicycling in the city. We appreciate the, the resources the city is putting forward for both walking and, and bicycling activities. We're very proud that Kettering is a bronze level bicycle friendly community and we look forward to continuing to offer suggestions for making improvements. Thank you. Thanks, Kenny. Thank you very much. Thanks for all your work. Um, the second proclamation this evening will be read uh, by Jackie and it is dealing with emergency medical services. Your Honor, I do have a proclamation. Whereas the emergency medical services is a vital public service, and whereas the members of the emergency medical services teams are ready to provide life-saving care to those in, in need 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and whereas access to the quality emergency care dramatically improves their survival and recovery rate of those who experience sudden illness or injury, and whereas the emergency medical services have grown to fill a gap by providing important out-of-hospital care, including preventative medicine, follow-up care, and access to telemedicine. And whereas the emergency medical services system consists of first responders, emergency medical technicians, paramedics, emergency medical dispatchers, firefighters, police officers, educators, administrators, pre-hospital nurses, emergency nurses, emergency physicians, trained members of the public, and other out-of-hospital medical care providers. And whereas the members of the emergency medical services team, whether career or volunteer, engage in thousands of hours of specialized training and continuing education to enhance their life-saving skills, the Greater Miami Valley EMS Council has provided protocol and training throughout the region for over 50 years. And whereas it's appropriate to recognize the value and accomplishments of the emergency medical service providers by des designating Emergency Services Week. So therefore, 
Peggy Lehner, Mayor of City of Kettering, Ohio, on behalf of City Council and the community, do hereby proclaim May 15th through the 21st to be the Emergency Medical Services Week in the City of Kettering. And we urge all citizens to recognize the importance of all emergency medical services and thank those professionals who are working to keep our community safe and healthy. And it is witnessed by our great mayor, Peggy Lehner. Thank you very much. Accepting the proclamation this evening is Chief Robbins, Fire Chief for the Kettering Fire Department. Uh -oh. Welcome, Chief. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council. I'd like to accept this proclamation on behalf of the men and women of Kettering Fire Department, our public service dispatchers, and our police department that does serve as an EMS role as first responders on emergency incidents. We have 80 operational members at Kettering Fire Department, all of our paramedics. All of our members are certified as paramedics. Um, I brought a show and tell. This is the EMS protocol that they referenced in the proclamation that our members review and are tested on on an annual basis. As you can see, it is a comprehensive document. If you would like a chance to read any of this, I can share it with you. But again, that's one copy. That is one copy of our protocol. So we operate under a physician with protocol for what procedures we do on EMS incidents at the paramedic level. And we operate through the Greater Miami Valley, Greater Miami Valley EMS Council, which we have for the last 50 years. So that is one portion of what we do as a fire department here as EMS, and we'd like to take the time and recognize the members for their work through this week. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks Chief. Thanks, Thank Chief. you very much. Thanks for all the work you do and their entire department. Uh, let's see. Um, we have no public hearings this week, but I would like to um, just briefly comment on the fact you notice there's an empty chair over here. Um, our city manager is down in Florida right now welcoming his new grandson um, who was born three days ago, something like that. Anyway, so uh, we certainly wish him and his daughter and her family um, the very best. So he'll be back next week. Um, we now are opening the meeting to any public comment on legislation that is coming before us here today. Uh, anyone wishing to speak before council with comments or new information about the legislation on tonight's agenda may do so at this time. Each speaker is limited to five minutes. Speakers must state their name and address. Comments should be addressed to council. If you have comments that are not about the legislation on tonight's agenda, there will be an opportunity for those to be heard later in the meeting. Is there anyone who wishes to speak on any of the legislation before council tonight? Okay, seeing none, we will now move on to um, ordinances in second reading and we'll start with Mrs. Fisher. Your Honor, I have an ordinance to rezone 2125 East Dorothy Lane from Economic Development Overlay District Number 14 to B, which is Business District. It's Planning Commission Case Number PC22-002. It is requested by the Planning and Development Department, and I move for approval. Second. Okay, do we have comments from staff? I believe that is um, Tom. Where's Tom Rumbelow? Over there. He's always hiding from me. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> this case uh, has to deal with the rezoning of the uh, lot that's on the northwest corner of Dorothy Lane and Woodman Drive. It's the former Throckmorton's Garden Center. Uh, it's being uh, requested to be rezoned from Economic Development Overlay Number 14 to be business so that it can be uh, more appropriately and easily redeveloped. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Great. Does anyone have any questions? No questions. Okay. Seeing none, please call the roll. Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Kleepass? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Duvall? Yes. Mr. Duke? Yes. Mayor Lehner? Yes. Your Honor, I have an ordinance in second reading to rezone 954 Boulevard from O Office District to BP Business Park District Planning Commission Case Number PC22-003 requested by Planning and Development Department. I move for approval. 
Second. Okay, Mr. Robillard, you have this one too. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this relates to the uh, op former synchrony buildings that are located in the Kettering Business Park, um, just off of Four, Four Drive and Wilmington Pike. Uh, those synchrony left those buildings, and the uh, new owner of those buildings now wishes to uh, is requesting a business park zoning district, so they have a uh, larger variety of potential uses that they could uh, locate there and market for there. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Seeing none, call the roll. Mr. Kleepas? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Duval? Yes. Mr. Duke? Yes. Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mayor Lehner? Yes. We'll now move on to resolutions. Who's reading? Mayor Lehner, I have a resolution authorizing the city manager to use competitive bargaining in the negotiated quotes to contract for the replacement of the existing electrical services to the parks maintenance center. This is being requested by public service department. The estimated cost is $125,000 and $125,000 has been budgeted for this request. request I move for approval. Request to buy. Second. Okay. You all right? Yep. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, Steve? I believe you have this one. Yeah, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this resolution will allow the city to uh, contract for the replacement of the existing electrical service at the Parks Maintenance Center on Valleywood Drive. Um, as noted, we have included $125,000 uh, for this project in this year's CIP budget. Uh, the project will replace the original uh, three-phase service to the site uh, with a new service that will increase the available power uh, for our modern uses um, at the center. Be happy to answer any questions. Anyone have any questions? Okay, seeing none, call the roll. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Duval? Yes. Mr. Duke? Yes. Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Kleepas? Yes. Mayor Lehner? Yes. Your Honor, I have a resolution authorizing the city manager to use competitive bargaining and negotiated quotes to contract for the repair of existing concrete walls and handrails at Poland Farm Barn. Estimated cost $45,000 and is requested by the Public Service Department. Move for approval. Second. Hey, Mr. Bergstrasser, you're up again. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this resolution will allow the city to uh, contract for repairs to the existing concrete ramp uh, that uh, allows access to the upper level of the Poland Farm Barn. Um, the project will include the uh, replacement of the concrete, uh, the top of the concrete walls, and a new uh, railing uh, that is code compliant with the building code. Uh, once that work is complete, we will uh, re mill and resurface the asphalt on the ramp. Be happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Okay. Hearing none, please call the roll. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Duval? Yes. Mr. Duke? Abstain. Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Kleepas? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mayor Lehner. Yes. Your Honor, I have a resolution adopting renewed and recalculated streetlight assessments, amended and or consolidated street lighting districts, and certifying them to the county auditor for collection. This is being requested by the engineering department. I move for approval. Second. Mr. Bergstresser. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this resolution is the final step in our annual uh, street light assessment uh, procedure. Uh, this resolution will, uh, will adopt the actual assessments um, and then letters will be sent out to the affected property owners here in the coming weeks um, and then uh, sent to the county auditor uh, by September if, if payment is not, um, not made. Um, one thing to note on this uh, resolution is that we are not increasing the um, rate of the assessments uh, for street lighting this year. Be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Do we have any questions? If seeing none, please call the roll. Ms. Duval? Yes. Mr. Duke? Yes. Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Kleepas? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Mayor Lehner? Yes. Your Honor, I have a resolution authorizing the city manager to accept and administer the 2022 Livable and Age-Friendly Communities Grant through the, the, through the Miami Valley Regional Planning Commission. Estimated cost is $10,000 requested by the manager's office. I move for approval. Second. Hey, Mr. Bergstresser. 
Thank you, Your Honor. This resolution will uh, allow the city to accept 2022 livable and age-friendly communities grant funding that is being provided through the Mine Valley Regional Planning Commission. Uh, we've been awarded a $10,000 grant uh, to support the pursuit of uh, becoming an AARP livable and age-friendly uh, community. Uh, this is a multi-year planning effort uh, focused on reorganizing and enhancing age-friendly aspects of uh, our community. I'd uh, be happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Seeing none, please call the roll. Mr. Duke? Yes. Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Klepes? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Duvall? Yes. Mayor Lehner? Yes. Your Honor, I have a resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement with the Fire Apparatus Service and Repair. The estimated cost is $285,000. The amount budgeted is $180,000, and it is requested by the fire department, and I move for approval. Second. Okay. Chief Robbins. Thank you, Your Honor. This resolution will allow the fire department to renew our contract with Fire Apparatus Service and Repair for repair, inspection, and uh, work on our fire engines and ladder truck. It will also move it from a mid-year PO to a fiscal year PO, so it's a 19-month contract. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Do you have any questions for the chief? Okay, hearing none, please call the roll. Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Klepes? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Duvall? Yes. Mr. Duke? Yes. Mayor Lehner? Yes. Your Honor, I have a resolution authorizing the city manager to use competitive bargaining and negotiated quotes to contract for the purchase of a high volume color copier. The estimated cost is $31,414. There will be a $4,000 rebate when I imagine the form is <laughs> filled out and turned in. The amount budgeted is zero. It's requested by Administrative Systems Department. I move for approval. Second. Okay, Mr. Bergstresser. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this resolution will allow the city to purchase a high volume color copier for use in our uh, city print shop. Um, our current high volume color copier recently broke and is no longer uh, serviced or supported by the vendor. Uh, so we use this copier uh, for quite a number of uh, citizen publications and internal use documents. So it is a pretty important piece of equipment for our administrative systems uh, department. Be happy to answer any questions. Okay. Anyone have any questions? Seeing none, call the roll. Mr. Klepes? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Duvall? Yes. Mr. Duke? Yes. Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mayor Lehner? Yes. Uh, Your Honor, I have a resolution to make supplemental appropriations for current expenses and other expenditures of the City of Kettering, State of Ohio, during the fiscal year ending 2022, December 31st, 2022. Uh, the total amount of net transfers we're requesting for the projects this evening is $133,000, and this is being requested by the Finance Department. Move for approval. I move for approval. Second. Okay, and uh, Mr. Briggs, Dresser, that's you too. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, we have uh, three items on the supplemental appropriation this evening, um, one of which is for the um, $105,000 uh, for the 19 month agreement with Fire Apparatus Service and Repair, which was a subject of a previous resolution uh, that is for the um, our fire equipment. Uh, another is for $10,000 to appropriate the um, aid, livable and age-friendly communities grant through MVRPC. And the final one is a supplement appropriation of $18,000 uh, for additional right-of-way consulting services uh, for the West Troop Road sidewalk project, which would run from Overland Trail to Southmore Circle, uh, Northwest, North Side Stroop Road in that area. Uh, the, uh, the consulting uh, quotes came in higher than anticipated, and so therefore we uh, need additional appropriation of funds. Be happy to answer any questions. Okay, any questions? Seeing none, please call the roll. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Duvall? Yes. Mr. Duke? Yes. Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Klepas? Yes. Mayor Lehner? Yes. We have one ordinance in first reading this evening. I believe we're up to Bob. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, <clears throat> we have an ordinance to rezone 2001 East Dorothy Lane from Economic Development Overlay District Number 14 to B Business District uh, Planning Commission Case Number PC22-005. Move for approval. First reading. First, first reading. reading. My apologies, first reading. But we will let Mr. Robillard explain it anyway. 
Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this has to do with the property located at the northeast corner of East Dorothy Lane and Delco Park Drive, where the uh, former Rapid Fire Pizza and uh, Krispy Kreme Donut uh, establishment was. Uh, this rezoning will allow the current property owner to redevelop the site uh, in an appropriate way for their particular use. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Seeing none, we'll move on. Um, we have certificates and petitions. Do we have any? Your Honor, we do not have any certifications or petitions this evening. Okay. Uh, we do not have a city manager here to give the uh, manager's report. However, I think Mr. Bergstresser is going to be doing it for him. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, a couple items uh, this evening on the community update. Uh, first off, uh, some recently announced concerts uh, that are coming to the phrase this summer. Uh, Leonard Skinner on Sunday, July 17th. Uh, Darcy Lynn and Friends on Tuesday, July 19th. And McGuffey Lane on Friday, July 22nd. Uh, tickets can be purchased uh, to all these events, uh, through these three, and also the entire season. Uh, the Phrase Pavilion Ticket Office, the Phrase Fan Fair Store in Town and Country, uh, Phrase.com, eTix.com, or Charge by Phone. Uh, we are in the midst of uh, taking nominations for our annual uh, Kettering Neighborhood Pride program. Uh, this is uh, one of my favorite programs uh, throughout the year that honors uh, business, uh, businesses and uh, residential properties that uh, do a great job taking care of their uh, uh, landscaping and uh, general property maintenance. Uh, so if you uh, notice a, a house out there that uh, is doing a great job, uh, go ahead and nominate them. Um, via form on our city's website, or you can call the volunteer office at 296-2433, and in the upcoming uh, contact with Kettering uh, spring newsletter, there will be a, um, a nomination form that you can uh, fill out and mail back to the city uh, that way as well. And then finally, uh, Safety Village registration is open right now uh, for children entering kindergarten in August 2022. Uh, very good program. Um, I know a number of uh, Kettering residents have gone through this program, uh, my oldest uh, child uh, included, and my middle child will be attending uh, this June as well. So uh, we're looking forward to that. Uh, we will have six sessions starting uh, on June 6th. And for more information, you can contact the engineering department at 296-2436. Uh, with that, Your Honor, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Anyone have any questions? Seeing none, thank you very much for your report. Um, at this time, if you would like to come speak before City Council, please come down to the podium. Each speaker will have a five minute limit. Speakers are asked to state their name and address. Is there anyone who would like to speak before City Council tonight? Please come forward. My name is uh, Dan Turban and I'm an Oakwood resident and I'm coming here uh, on a matter of uh, what I think is a, a public safety matter. Um, on um, April 29th at about 2.15, uh, I was going north on Schroer and I was stopped in the inside lane where the crosswalk comes over from the high school. And there was a young lady that was crossing. Uh, I assume she was a student, although it was at 2.15, it, it, it was too early for dis dismissal. As I'm in the inside lane, there was a car to my right that, that blew through the intersection, missed her by probably two feet. Had he hit her, it would have resulted, I'm, I'm fairly confident, in a, in a, in a, in a fatality. Um, I later talked to the young man that went through the intersection and he said, and he was shaken, and he said, I, I didn't see the lights. Um, in my opinion, if you look at those lights, the way they're configured, uh, ODOT has had success with, with wrong way signage, lowering it to put it in people's field of vision. That might be one consideration. If you go a little further north on Schroer, you'll find other crosswalks with other lighting and other signage, and what you'll probably see, the signs that are here, uh, they're, well, they're, uh, the, they're this configuration. There's two lights on a sign, so you've got eight lights per sign that are flashing. If you go further north, those are, are vertical, and there are 16 LEDs that flash when those when somebody w wants to cross. They're they're much more much more visible. Uh, I'm certainly not a traffic control expert, 
but I think it's worth someone taking a look at to see if perhaps that isn't something that could be re reconfigured at a fairly low cost. The, the signs that are there, you know, I'm five foot eight, and if I reach up, I mean, they're probably 10, 10, 10 feet into, into the air, and so it's certainly a, above most people's field of vision. So anyhow, I, I, I simply bring that to you today, and uh, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Turbin. Um, I just was kind of surprised because I uh, was talking to a lady this morning who, when she found out I was the mayor, she had a list of things she wanted to talk about. But one of them was that exact same item. She said she went through a, a light, didn't see it. So she said, you don't look up high like that. Um, but that's certainly something I think that uh, our, our public safety people can take a look at and, and see if there's something a little off, but thank you for bringing that to our attention. Okay, was there anyone else? Aha! Uh -huh. Our friend. Mm -hmm. I just recognize the ones on the back. Yeah. Looks like an Irishman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hi, my name's Terry Brennan. I live at 3118 Hatherton Road. I was here two weeks ago talking before you, which is the same time you give residents to correct issues with your HOA letters, and yet the issues still exist. Nothing is being done on it, and I can't, it, it bothers me that to think that maybe you guys don't want small businesses and blue collar workers in your district. I know uh, Mr. Kleepas says to shop Kettering, but yet he has business owners hiding their best advertisement behind fences from their neighbors. I can't imagine that would be the reason. The only thing I can think is maybe the fact that you don't think that this is a big enough issue that the rest of the residents know. So I think I need to start making sure that the rest of the residents in the city know that these ordinances need to be abolished. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, I guess we're ready for Anybody? council reports. Anyone else? There was there wasn't anyone else. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Leadership <laughs> Academy? Yeah. Is that what that is? <laughs> right. Okay. All right. So um, let's start with uh, Mrs. Last Fisher. Chance. Do you want to start? Sure, I'll start, ma'am. Um, so I uh, got back from vacation, and I will tell you, every single night I've had an activity. And so there's three of them, unfortunately, for the group for me to bring up. First one I went to was called the Collaboratory. And uh, just to bring attention to folks that there is definitely a grassroots movement to bring Daytonians back to Dayton. So it's a type of, um, I'll call it recruiting for jobs um, and bringing more people back into our community. So it was really a neat thing to, to see. Second, I went to the art in the playground. Um, it was very cold and a little bit yucky outside, but, um, with that, there were still tons of kids out there um, having a great time, and I happened to run into the Southdale Orf Ensemble because they did a little concert out there. And uh, none other than uh, Jill's daughter, Hope, got to do a solo, and these kids were so enthusiastic, and the music was so great. Um, and so what a wonderful uh, way to spend my Saturday, quite frankly. Last but certainly not least, I want to bring up the Montgomery County Law Enforcement Memorial Ceremony that some of us attended. Um, has meaning for three different reasons. Number one, um, we obviously honored one of our own fallen, and that was Officer Metzger. Um, second, um, whether ever, anybody realized it or not, Officer Kramer and his wife Nancy, their son was honored with a scholarship that day, so that was fantastic. Um, I go, I know them. Um, and then third, um, uh, a dear friend of mine, Mary Bell, um, also passed away. So the, the service had um, lots of meaning to me. So that's my okay. report, ma'am. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kleepass. Well, thank you, Your Honor. Um, always, always glad to report on uh, new business uh, coming to town. And uh, uh, quite a few of us have been able to attend a couple uh, uh, ribbon cuttings that have been held in the, the last couple of weeks. Um, I do want to highlight the, uh, uh, on April 27th, uh, uh, we were at the uh, opening of the Planet Fitness Center uh, over in what old timers will remember was the old Ontario building, and then it became a drug mart primarily in there. 
but what Planet Fitness did to revitalize that facility and uh, turn it into the, uh, the business that it is there now is absolutely amazing. So that was a, a, a great ad for us. And then, and, and then today, uh, we were at the Berkshire Hathaway Realty Company opening up at Dorothy Lane and, and Far Hills. And had a nice, uh, nice turnout of people from the county were there and Premier Health Network, one of their folks were there. Uh, so and and many many realtors from uh, from this area uh, dropped in. Uh, on the 27th, um, I represented the uh, mayor at the uh, Reynolds and Reynolds annual hockey match. Uh, I did that once uh, several years back before, and that is dropping the puck for the mayor. That's <laughs> always a, a great great uh, privilege to uh, do that and. Um, they did put out carpet on the ISO, so I didn't have to worry about going out and, and, and falling down. But the highlight uh, uh, to me was that uh, several years ago when I was there, the, the, the competition was between Reynolds and Reynolds Dayton folks and Reynolds and Reynolds uh, Canadian folks uh, from their facilities uh, in Canada. And I thought, boy, that was, those guys are really pretty good and uh, look like a regular NHL hockey game. But this year, the, and I imagine it's been for several years, it's local people that, uh, that uh, uh, play, it isn't the ones from Canada, but uh, in the program it said there's guests. Half of the people who played were guests, and I think they might have came from the NHL <laughs> because they were really, really good. It's a fundraiser for their, uh, for their organization, and uh, uh, Mary, Beth, Mary Beth Odell and uh, uh, Frank Spolrich were both there representing the Kettering Parks Foundation, who received a very generous donation from Reynolds and Reynolds. So uh, we thank them uh, for that, and I was privileged once again to represent you there, Mayor. Uh, placeholders save the date. Spa Snock is on the June 15th, 6 p.m. All of you on council will be getting a notice about ways you can volunteer that night. And we have ponchos we provide because it will rain, <laughs> as, as we always notice. And last but not least, uh, when you have a choice, shop catering. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Hall? Well, thanks for m mentioning my daughter's solo. That was really special. The um, Southdale has such a great music program. And uh, with that, school is ending in a couple weeks. And um, my kids are going to the Kettering Recreation Center for camp, and they can't wait for that and really enjoy it. And we have that great option here and uh, probably need a lot more child care options in Kettering for the summer. Um, school ending isn't going to be good news for some kids because with school ending, the um, free and reduced or the free lunch program that came with the pandemic is ending as well. And we have a serious child hunger issue in Kettering. Um, one way this is going to be addressed is with um, uh, First Baptist Church in Kettering coordinates school or um, child feeding program every summer at the Trails of Oak Creek, and that's available for any child that needs to come and get lunches each day. There's activities and um, there'll be food provided for as many kids that come. And they do have one week still that's not filled. It's completely volunteer run. And uh, a group is needed from June 13th to 17th. And um, really glad we have this program in Kettering. And if your group or church group would like to volunteer, that, that spot is still needed filling. Thanks. It was June 13th? June 13th to 17th. <clears throat> And the volunteer group helps to provide the supplies. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Scott. Uh, I'll be brief. Uh, I had the privilege to attend last Wednesday, May 4th, the MVCC open house at the facility uh, just outside of, of Kettering City Limits, our own folks who, who provide the coverage of our council meetings. It was great to see those people show off uh, their talents and capabilities, and I, and I truly think it's an underutilized asset that I wish more of our citizens knew about uh, to use. So they've got some really cool stuff there. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Duval? Uh, first, I would like to congratulate uh, Mr. Schwederman on the birth of his grandson. It's very exciting. 
a little disappointed he didn't name it after one of us, but whatever, that's <laughs> fine. Um, I would agree with Mr. Scott that MVCC Open House was fantastic. It was, it, it is absolutely an underutilized resource that we have, and we appreciate MVCC and all the work they do. It was a great open house. We saw the drones and took a tour of the studio, watched a live performance. It was fantastic. Um, I also had the pleasure of attending the Law Enforcement Memorial downtown. Um, you stole my thunder, Jackie. I wanted to congratulate Officer Kramer and his son on the scholarship. That's pretty exciting. Um, I want to thank, um, as it is EMS week, thank you to Chief Robbins and all of 80 of your fire department members who read through all of that. I'm not doing that. <laughs> And um, I just want to remind everybody, buy their uh, Juneteenth tickets. Juneteenth is on June 20th at Poland Farm. Tickets are available online, and you can buy them in person. I believe the rec center, a couple other places. $5 gets you a lunch and a really cool event. And that's all I have. Yeah, thank you so much, Mr. Duke. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Hopefully I have it right this week, although I'm surprised. Kettering Leadership Academy graduation is this coming Thursday. So we have two students in the audience tonight that are fulfilling their requirements. And if I can see right, it's Eric Adams, right? Uh, Eric, oh, I screwed it again, I'm sorry. And Vicki Clone, Dr. Clone, why are you back again? Did it not stick last week or what? I mean. <laughs> You're a good person. Anyway, graduation is Thursday. Um, I'm gonna take a couple of minutes, uh, probably longer than, than normal, because I wanna talk about uh, a friend of mine and somebody that we really need to be proud of in this community. Um, last week, a former congressman and uh, U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, Tony Hall, was awarded the Dayton Peace Prize, celebrating the 25th anniversary of the Dayton Peace Award, which ended the Bosnia-Herzegovina conflict. Um, this award is uh, a very important award. It's only been given six times in 25 years. And three of the recipients, one was President Bill Clinton, one was Ambassador Richard Holbrook, and another that you all know is uh, Archbishop Desmond Tutu. So these are quite renowned folks that did an awful lot for peace uh, throughout the world in, in various ways. Tony Hall grew up in Kettering, graduated, played football for Fairmont, graduated from Fairmont, went to college in Ohio, and then uh, he probably in his, I'm, I'm gonna guess, in, in, around his 35 years old, something like that, um, he decided to run for Congress and served as our U.S. representative from the Kettering area for about 23 or 24 years. I'm not sure if that's exactly right. But hunger issues have very, been very important to him. During his time in Congress, he went to Ethiopia and the Sudan and saw children dying before his very eyes. And, and if you talk to him about that, it's a very moving experience. But um, when I was uh, on council, I visited him a couple of times in his office in Washington, D.C., and he would often talk about hunger here in the Dayton community. And at that time, we were like number two in the country back in the 90s on hunger, believe it or not. Um, and he decided to do something about it and began to work on hunger issues here in, in this community. Um, one of the, uh, as, as ambassador to the United Nations, um, he ended up rallying support uh, in Congress, after he was out of office, in Congress to get millions of people fed throughout the United States, I mean throughout the world, and saving literally millions of lives. Uh, his imprint on hunger in the world uh, is fabulous, and that's why uh, he received the uh, Peace Prize for the work that he done. He's been nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize a couple of times, uh, and so that's the that's kind of person he is. I wanna share one quick story. Um, I, met, I first met Tony back in 1978, uh, right before he was running for Congress, and we stayed in touch all through the years. But in the, in the mid-90s, 
uh, I was in his office and we were talking about hunger and he said, hey, you know, you're on council, you kind of care about this, yeah, what? He said, well, I'm going to be doing a three-day hunger fast and I'd like you to join. If you want to join me, join me. I said, okay, what do I have to do? Well, don't eat for three days, oh, thanks. So I proceeded to engage in the first hunger fast I ever did and I will tell you, it, it's a unique experience, and, and I admire people that are able to do that on a regular basis, because by day three, you're becoming a little bit disoriented. It's, it's not all that easy. Uh, but at the end of the three days, we all gathered at the old house of bread on the west side of Dayton to celebrate. We were gonna have beans and, and rice uh, as a celebration of ending our fast. And I'm in the kitchen, and the phone rings, and I answer the phone, and the person on the other end of the phone said, is Tony Hall there? And I said, well, yes, he is, but he's about to speak. Who, who's calling? Uh, this is Al Gore. Uh, yeah, right, uh -huh, sure, it's really Al Gore. Yeah, tell me a story. No, uh, really, uh, yes, this is Vice President Al Gore. <laughs> And I said, oh, excuse me. So I quickly got Ambassador Hall on the phone. The point I raise the story is it turns out that Bill Clinton and Al Gore joined him in that three-day fast. And it was never announced to the public prior to doing days. that. 22 days. 22-day fast. Well, he went 22. I went three. <laughs> Our part was three. <laughs> So, <laughs> well, that's, that, that's, that was the requirement. Anyway, uh, it just shows, though, the kind of credibility that he had when the Vice President of the United States calls him on the phone at the House of Bread to congratulate him on what he was doing for hunger when he uh, was working so hard to help others. I will close by mentioning, if you don't haven't already figured it out, Jill Hall, his daughter, uh, <laughs> serves on our city council, and I wanted to share that story about your dad because I just admire him so much. That's all I have. Thank, Thank you so Ron. much. Appreciate that. You're welcome. And you took away my thunder. <laughs> I was going to do the same thing, but anyway, <laughs> that's quite all right because the thunder really belongs to. Uh, um, Ambassador Hall, and he has been someone who I've, I've admired my entire life. And so thank you for sharing your dad for us part of the time. Um, I attended a number of the events that you all have covered, and uh, it's been a you know, busy, filled week, couple weeks. Um, but there's one that I would like to mention that none of you even knew about. Um, <clears throat> if you will recall, a couple weeks ago, we honored as the Youth Volunteer of the Year a young lady by the name of Chloe Atkins. And I asked her when I gave her her proclamation if she'd like to be mayor for the day, and she said no. And she went home and thought about it, or her parents thought about it, someone thought about it, and I got a letter the next day saying, Chloe's changed her mind, she'd like to do that. <laughs> so um, yesterday I had a ball uh, with the help of Shauna and Mary, both put their heads together. Um, what exactly could we do to make a eight-year-old the mayor for the day? <clears throat> and it was her mother's request that we kind of keep her at school. And so we did. And uh, she got to cut a ribbon, which was apparently one thing she really wanted to do was cut a ribbon. Um, so she cut a ribbon for Chloe Atkins Day. <laughs> um, but then the kids really entertained me. They all, they had put together a video presentation about what they wanted to be when they grew up. And the, what it took to get trained for that job and what it did, uh, what some of the benefits of it might be and what some of the issues might be. Like one of them wanted to be a police officer, but he said he might get shot. Someone was gonna burn up in a fire. I mean, they, they knew what these jobs entailed. But it was a wonderful experience. Chloe was as cute and as charming as she was when she came before council. So I'd just like to say um, congratulations, Chloe, on mayor of the day. So with that, um, the meeting is adjourned. However, before, <laughs>
Um, our next regularly scheduled city council meeting will be May 24th, 2022, and this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>